Greetings, salutations, and welcome to Market Matters. I'm Ku Sutrong, and I'm joined by Max, otherwise known as Suli Azman. Now, DRB Highcom is our company in the news. This is, is uh, they had a press conference today. They, and by the way, they closed the day down 6 cents or 5 percent to 1 ringgit 14. You went to a mini briefing by their fully owned automotive subsidiary, Proton Holdings Bahad. That's right, in uh, Chuang. Uh, today, the Proton CEO, Dr. Abdul Haris, uh, Abdul Haris, says that the company plans to sell 150,000 cars in 2016, up 50% from somewhat like 100,000 units cars sold in 2015. Now, do you believe in this story, Chong? Do you I just want to say, I want to have some of what he's smoking because these are very, <laughs> <laughs> these are pretty. Pretty, these are pretty stretched targets, even if I do say so myself, even from McKinsey. But uh, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not a bad thing to stretch or to you know to, to challenge your management. It's not a bad thing to challenge your operations. But these are tough times we're talking about. And, and despite all that, if you look at it, right, um, they are not a cheap company. They trade at about twenty-eight times earnings versus UMW, which is a one-trick pony essentially with uh, Toyota cars and Lexus cars, twenty-five times earnings. Tanjong was just Nissan in there in their stable 20 times earnings. You know, for DRB Highcom, where 7 out of 10 ringgit is derived from automotive sales, they've got Hondas, Audis, VW, Suzuki's, Mitsubishi's, Protons, at a time when car sales are said to be about flat for the year or down, according to uh, Frost and Sullivan, these are very, very stretched valuation, are very, very stretched uh, challenges. That's right, you know, and, uh, and, and just to add on to that, and today the uh, potential also says that the company wants to venture into compact cars. Now, they already have, like what, uh, uh, MPV, they have Exora, and they have the sedan models, Saga, um, and as well as Perdana, and they also wanted to go into these, these things, you know, is this the right time for them to do so? Because we have Produa, you know, uh, producing many, many mass market models, compact cars. Yeah, uh, and of course they'll be doing this with the Suzuki brand, uh, mm. of course, which which uh, DRB also distributes and Suzuki said to be pulling out of Malaysia, so they'll be taking over that whole business from them. It's going to be a challenge and we'll be looking to see how DRB deals with it, especially at a time when the ringgit is so weak and they'll be announcing, I think, some kind of price hikes soon, price hike, which yes, will correct. impact their sales volumes as well as their market share, which has been dented considerably by Parodoa. Correct, and, and, and on the uh, car price hike, you know, the chairman today, Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamed, um, said that uh, after Chinese New Year, Proton might be actually hiking their prices to reflect, yeah. you know, uh, better costs uh, from imported parts as well. Because you also know that the ringgit has fallen by 22% against the Japanese yen as well as the US dollar. Yeah, of course, uh, Hondas have, Honda have raised, Toyota have raised. Everybody's um, been raising. Mazda will soon raise. Perodua has already raised late last year. They'll probably raise again this year. You can't escape it, but uh, you know there's going to be a huge earnings impact. So if Proton don't raise prices, and in fact they do compete on a on an attractive rebate front, then they might do something in terms of sales and in terms of volumes, but it's not going to do profit at DRB any good. So uh, to take it all home and to summarize, the weak ringgit versus the yen has seen car makers like Toyota and Honda raise prices not good for the sector. Secondly, um, you know, uh, we've had the Proton raise uh, sales targets for their uh, cars, 250,000 un units from 100,000 last year. Uh, they want to expand into small cars, uh, partnering with Suzuki, and they might raise prices in uh, after Chinese New Year, thanks to the depreciating ringgit. Let's uh, switch along to Hartalega. We talked about this earlier in terms of uh, uh, S-Ceramics. Now, this company, uh, Max, uh, I think more valuable than Top Glove at this point in time, they've closed the day down by 5 cents or 1% to 6 bucks. Now, this is a company that done really well. They've doubled in share price from January last year. Uh, not cheap anymore, 42 times earnings. But um, according to the brokers, and we've got two brokers here, TA as well as, as well as Maybank, they're both quite sanguine on the stock. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the TA, for instance, they have a sell call with a target price of 525 cent. They said that valuation is appeared to be stretched, you know, 42 times. That's, that's pretty, uh, pretty uh, you know, stretched as well, uh, despite solid fundamentals. And also, today, TA, they recently issued a report after meeting the management, saying that they want to uh, get updated on the operations. Um, they have also a beneficiary of the uh, US dollars, given the fact that their every selling prices have been on a downward trend. Yeah, so what happened is TA Research went along. They sent some of their analysts to uh, Hartalega's factories and they were quite um, they were quite upbeat despite the fact that, um, you know, obviously selling prices have been down and there have been uh, all kinds of challenges in terms of uh, the weak uh, raw, you know, ringgit in terms of raw material prices. They reckon that, um, you know, capacity is good, vibrance, uh, operations are vibrant and plant utilisation is about 85%. Let's just quickly talk, talk about Maybank and... Um, Maybank reckoned that uh, Hartalega's fairly valued, they mm. maintain a hold on the stock. 
they have nonetheless raised target price for Hotelega to five bucks fifty because they expect quarterly earnings to be released 16 February to be much better, as much as 62% year on year in terms of net profit. Yeah, I mean, this would lift the net profit target to 198 ringgit to 200 million ringgit. Uh, for the full nine month period. For the full nine month period. And the target price also has been raised to 5 ring and 50 cent or 15% upside, you know, as well as roll uh, forward valuation uh, based 2017, which is what unchanged target 20, uh, PE of 25 times. and. And they are thinking that the future earnings growth has already been priced in. Yeah, but be that as it may, uh, they've got new capacity coming on stream and Maybank have been told they understand that these new capacities at Sepang, Plant 1 and Plant 2, uh, has already been fully sold ahead with fresh orders from new and existing customers in, com in you know, markets like the US, Germany, UK and Japan, supporting earnings growth in the third quarter of 2016. As well as um, as well as their valuations and their target price, so uh, I guess if you want to take a punt, you know, Hotelega is it. Yeah, I mean, speaking of of the capacity, Chuang, I've actually recently, you know, passed through their uh, NGC plant in Sepang. It's actually really huge, and you know, and and looking at those capacity plants, they actually have more things to be filled in as they need to uh, expand their market share and, and grow their earnings. Okay, so uh, to summarize, uh, TA Research um, maintain a sell with a target price of uh, five bucks twenty five. For Hatalega, Maybank in turn, uh, fairly valued and maintain the hold with a target price of 550, uh, raised to by 15%, and a unchanged uh, target price earnings ratio of 25 times earnings. So um, that's a wrap from us. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you want to get more on these stocks as well as information on financial markets, go to every new sensible news stand in Malaysia. Thanks to Max. Uh, and uh, visit thehmarkets.com. Thank you for watching. Good night and good luck.